Hi everyone, welcome to today's Google Digital Garage um, training session on Build a CV and Write a Cover Letter. So I'm Annie and I'm a trainer for the Google Digital Garage and I've been a trainer for now with the Garage for over five years. I've also had my own business and been in marketing leadership for most of my career. So I know what it's like to recruit and to find people for roles. So hopefully I can bring something of value to you today in this session. And we're fortunate because we're not alone. We're joined by the lovely Samantha and she's in the chat. You'll be able to recognize her by her name and also she will have a blue spanner next to it. So please do engage with us. We really want to support you and this is an opportunity for us to have that two-way discussion. Now, if you want to join in the chat, you simply sign into YouTube. It will take just a couple of seconds and then you'll be able to join us. If you're having any problems in seeing or hearing us, simply refresh the page and often that will iron out a number of the problems, if not all for you. Now, this is not the only session run by the Google Digital Garage. There are a whole host of them, and you'll be able to see the link below. If you also go to g.co forward slash digital garage, you'll be able to see the other ones that are coming up in the near future, as well as tools and also certifications. So one of the great things that I might talk about in this session today are that there are lots of free online certifications and qualifications that you can do nowadays. Um, at Google, they are offering a free fundamentals course in digital marketing, which you can also find at g.co forward slash digital marketing, uh, sorry, D digital garage. So now we'll get further started with today's session. Now, to begin with, we're going to look at building a CV and what that actually means. What is a CV? What is the purpose of one? And how might we use it to serve our best purposes in looking for work? The next is writing a cover letter, something that is very important to a lot of companies and a chance to talk more about the role of a cover letter and what it can do for you in your job search. And then we're going to finally get ready and look at some options and trends around the job search in today's world. Before going any further, I'm really delighted to inform you about our free Google certificates. Now, the careers certificate is available to uh, many people and you can join up by going to goo.gall forward slash career search UK. And the brilliance of this qualification is it works to the most needed skills of the moment, which are IT support, project management and UX and analytics design. Uh, sorry, UX design and analytics. And all of these skills are really in demand in the marketplace. So do take a look at goo.gull forward slash careers UK to find out more about how you can sign up to that through our related partners that we have on the program. And it's free, it's flexible, you can do it from home. So I would definitely look into seeing if it's something that you would like to do. Just a few hellos. So hello, Mario. I am really looking forward to this. I, I'm really pleased that you're here, Mario. Um, Akash joining from India. Hello. And Kusum and Johnson from Tanzania. I love that we've got another international audience again today. And welcome all of you. And please do share any of your thoughts with us as you go through today. So now that you've started talking to me, I'd love to ask Mario, Kusum, Johnson and the rest of you, what are your career aspirations at the moment? What are you wanting to achieve? Obviously, you're here to find out about the CV and cover letter. So it sounds like you're in the market for work. Please do share with us in the chat box some of your career aspirations, because that way we might be able to give you advice surrounding those ideas. And it's a great place to start to have an idea about what we might want to achieve or what we can aspire to gives us a clear goal and something to work towards as job seekers. And it makes it easier also from a recruiter or an employer hiring managers point of view to be able to support that aspiration. If we know what it is you're looking for and that passion, drive and desire will make it very interesting to an employer if you bring that forward. It will make them know that you are on track, you know what you want, and uh, they might be able to support you in achieving those goals. So really do share any career aspirations. So we've got one from Custom. I want to be in data analytics. Fantastic. So do have a look as well at the courses for data analytics, because there's a number of free courses online, Custom. If you haven't already done that, you may have already got your qualifications in analytics. But I love how very clear you are. And it is a 
a very in-demand skill. Euphoma, um, I hope I'm pronouncing these lovely names correctly. Um, good morning to you. I'm Mario. I'm a civil engineer with a year of work experience. Fantastic. Such a range of people here with lots of different um, experiences, which is fantastic. Um, thank you all for joining. So now we're going to look at building a CV. So there is not a one size fits all. We're going to look at a different range of approaches as we go through building a CV, what we need to include and also the formats along the way. So do bear in mind, you need to be a bit flexible depending on the industry you might be working in or the sector uh, that you're applying for. And some companies such as startups might want um, a short CV, say at a one page, some may want longer. So bear in mind that it is not one size fits all, but to be flexible to your requirements. OK, so in the chat again, I love that we're communicating here in the chat. Um, please do share with me what you think the primary purpose is of a CV. So I've got NG asking what the difference is between a CV and a resume. We'll come on to questions in a minute, um, but it's a very good question. Um, and yes, so what do you think the primary purpose is of a CV? Why would we bother to create one? Why are you here today to, to think of making a CV? What do you think um, the value is of a CV? And who are we writing a CV for? So let's think about that. Our primary purpose of a CV, who is it for? And what do we think it is going to help us with? Now, I'm going to wait because there's a bit of a delay between me speaking and any um, of your responses coming through. But do keep them coming through and I will keep checking as we go along. So a curriculum vitae or otherwise known as CV is actually the course of your life. So it's looking at our whole journey, the choices we've made, the direction we've taken, the things we've done, it expresses who we are as a person, our intentions, our desires, and our skills. So the course of your life is really what we're sharing. Now, when someone recruits you, they're recruiting the whole person. They're recruiting your skills, your personality, your experience, your qualifications, your attitude, and your aptitude. And many companies hire for attitude and train for skill, but they need to see on a CV your attitude and aptitude in order to make that decision. And a lot of that will come out of the journey you've taken and the course of life that you've gone through. So it should be about your life experiences and not just the jobs you've had, but the kind of journey you've taken in those jobs and, and your character as you're going through. Something's just come up in the chat. Um, Mario, who has um, the year of civil engineering, is wanting to stand out amongst others and find a new job and also has some skills and knowledge in marketing and looking to expand it and combine engineering skills and bring new skills. Fantastic, Mario. Absolutely. Um, so we don't have to be just one skill focused and sometimes a lot of skills would overlap. And it's fantastic that you're able to see other aspects that you can offer to the job market, Mario, um, and how you might be able to bring those in into your CV. So thank you very much for sharing that with us today. Um, so yes, we're going to look now at the course of our lives. Now, a CV is incredibly important, and we might want to think that a hiring manager will look or a recruiter at our CV for hours upon end. It would be great given the amount of time that we and attention we put on our CVs, but actually on average it's only seconds that they will have and there will be many CVs in front of them. And actually only 2% of candidates make it to interview. So how can we do, as Mario said, something to make us stand out and be reputable in the job market? So the first thing we need to do is to make it nice and succinct for employers. So we begin with a summary of our experience, being able to share quickly what we do in the first part of our CV is incredibly important because that is where people will take in the most attention. And what you want to get in that first quarter of your CV is actually your hard skills, which we will talk about a bit later on. But you really want to show what it is that you can bring to the table. 
We also need to look at our goals. We need to be quite focused on what we want to achieve, because if we don't know what we want to achieve, it's going to be very difficult for a hiring manager to believe that they're taking you in for the right reason into a job. It is a chance, therefore, to talk about the goal that you have and to be really relevant to the job you're applying for. And we'll talk about how we can do that throughout this session today. But do always, no matter what, be authentic and honest because it will come through at some stage in the process. They will question you about everything that's written in the CV. So do put what's true and honest and authentic to you so that you're able to show that you are an individual and that you add that spark um, by being you and your course of your life. So what information should we include in a CV? We've just identified three key elements, but what other pieces of information do you think we might want to include? Please do keep them coming into the chat. Um, Akash has said in terms of a purpose of a CV, it's to tell the recruiters about my level of knowledge. I love that. That's a beautiful explanation, Akash. Thank you so much for that. It's absolutely true that we need to be able to share. And I love that you've put level of knowledge because often what we're leaving out in CVs is substantiated evidence around our skills and how to quantify them. So for example, Mario's put that he's got one year of work experience in civil engineering. And this is really helpful because we're able to know where you're at, what level and the background you've got so that we know where that you're fitting to the role and where to grow you in your career as well. So absolutely, Akash, the purpose of the CV does involve letting recruiters know about your level of knowledge as well. Completely true. Thank you. Do keep these things coming through. And I, I love that you're engaging with us this morning. So now here in front of us, there is no universally um, sort of templated CV, if you like. As I say, it really does evolve around, um, revolve around different areas that you're applying for in terms of sector, in terms of industry. And also um, it depends on your background and skills as well that you want to bring forward. But the things that we do want to always keep on a CV is your basic information, um, your opening summary, so that's your nice, succinct introduction, your work experience, so what you've actually already done, your education, achievements, and your skills and strengths. Um, because without putting that on there, an employer is not going to know what it is you can bring to the table. So a CV, as we said, it can be variable. It can be just one page, for example, in a startup situation. Generally speaking, although there is some flexibility, you don't want to go over two pages because of the fact that they've got so many CVs to go through and they want it nice and succinct. And the idea that it's two pages means that we really want to get to the point nice and quickly and make sure that we're showcasing our skills, personality, experience, our qualifications and our attitude in those two pages so that they know exactly what they're going to get if they hire us. Essentially, what we are doing is we are marketing ourselves. And that is another thing I want to mention. There is a session on personal branding, and I really recommend that you take that session. It's at g.co forward slash digital garage, because personal branding is so essential to all of us. We are all a brand these days, and we all need to stand out in the marketplace. So do please take note of that opportunity. With, on average, 50 CVs for any position that uh, somebody might need to read, and it, it can be much higher than that, we need to now think about how to make these steps work for us. So basic information. Now, this is where we really want to put it at the very top of our CV. Now, we don't want to really include marital status. We don't want anything that's going to take up more room than is necessary. We don't want to put date of birth. We don't want to put our full address. Our basic location is absolutely fine. So we'll put our name, our basic, um, uh, our name and our, um, for example, location, city, um, that we are in. So we don't need to give the full um, address. We do need to give contact information such as an email and a phone number so that they can get in contact with us. Now, many of us may, when we're younger, set up email addresses that are a bit of fun, a bit quirky, but when it comes to a job hunt, I really recommend not using such um, emails. 
And where appropriate, it might be useful to set up an email completely just for the job search market. So creating an email tailored just for looking for work and a, a simple email such as your first dot last name, if, if that's available or similar, um, will be a great way to appeal to employers because they want to be taken seriously. And it can say a lot if you put something very joking in your email, it can make them feel that you don't take their company or the job seriously. So that could go against you. So certainly it's worth doing. It's also worth having that separate email so that you can filter through the jobs and um, pay attention to that as your job search channel. Make sure your contact numbers are correct and your email are up to date so that people can get hold of you. And also include any other important information. So, for example, certain jobs may require your nationality because of work permits, etc. If relevant, if they need visas, date of birth, as I say, I would I would personally keep off. It is your choice. But in, there's no hard and fast rule here. If you feel that you want to put it on for whatever reason to show um, experience, seniority or um, to show that, you know, you're starting out, that's fine. But Actually, they cannot discriminate on age, so do not put your date of birth on there if you don't want to. If you're going into a role that requires you to drive, to have a car, um, it might be useful to talk about the fact that you own a car and you have a driving license. But don't put that in as standard, only if it's really relevant to the role, because anything that you need to put in is essential. Anything else needs to be taken out because we need to be really crystallised and focused on what we're putting on our CV. If you do have any portfolio links, your LinkedIn account, for example, if you have LinkedIn, that could be a great place to showcase you as well. So do feel free to pop in a portfolio or a LinkedIn if it's going to show you in the best light for that job. Once you've got your um, your introduction in terms of your basic information in there, the next thing to think about is really opening up with some key summary statements. Now, this is where we'll want to put our hard skills in. And we'll talk about those a bit later on. But here we need to let them know a little bit about our goal. Um, it's what we can do for an employer and why we are succinctly the best match for the job that we're going for. So I suppose you could see it as an elevator pitch. Now, an elevator pitch is um, when you're going up in an elevator and just in seconds, really, you have to be able to state who you are, what your offer is and why you're different. And that is what you want to be doing really in the summary part of your CV. And you want it to make sense to the job you're applying for. Also, if you do lack experience, there are ways that you can make them up that we'll talk about later on in terms of unpaid work and voluntary work. So you might want to highlight that in your summary if you're early into your career or you don't have too much work experience. That could be something that you might want to put um, into there as well. But what you do want to include is your overall goal, ambitions. People like to know what you're there to do. People want to see it as far more than just a job. They want to know that this is really going to make you happy because it's a big part of your life, a big part of what you do. And if you have selected the right job, they have selected the right candidate and they want you to be the right fit. So think carefully about what you're applying for and why and the kind of skills that you think you can give to that particular role. Now, the next thing to consider is work experience. And this is where you want to complete it in reverse chronological order. So that being the most recent job first. So whatever you've been working in, you want to start with the job title and you want to give a little bit about um, what the job entailed in terms of what you did for the company. So what solution were you giving to the company? And that could be in your first couple of lines. So you want to include your job title, the dates, that you've worked there and also your results, what you were there to do and how you achieve them. It's really nice if you can quantify that in numbers. So for example, say it's customer service, you may be introduced um, a new um, program that reduced customer waiting by X amount or um, you introduced um, different practices that helped customer satisfaction rating, et cetera, et cetera, or you just helped improve the positive sentiment and reviews around the brand. 
So there's different things you can say to qualify what you've done, but having some evidence base is really useful um, to put in there because it will tell the um, the hiring manager that you've done this before, you know how to do it and you've achieved results. If you're able to show those things, that will really help. That will show what we call hard skills because it shows that you've done it before. So that's why key projects and results are important. But don't worry if you've not had paid work experience. There are other ways that you might have achieved those results, um, such as volunteer work um, where relevant and maybe working for um, somebody's company, a friend's company, etc. And if you haven't done those things, there is volunteer organisations like charity.org um, that you can go to to sign up and offer your services. What is important is that you're getting across in this work experience the practical side of your skills and how they've been applied and been received by the organisations. The next thing to consider is your education and your achievements. And again, we need to start with the most recent being at the top. Now, we can include in here professional qualifications and academic qualifications. If we're going to put in our academic qualifications, we do need to say where we studied and the dates we studied. And we might also want to highlight anything that we did on there. For example, if, we, if we've done a master's course, we might have a dissertation and the title of our dissertation might be relevant and the results that we got from doing that. Because that can show our interests, our research, and it already shows a background in that particular area. Professional qualifications, again, they're very useful and there's no need now to um, just focus on university as a, a way of sharing your skills. There are places like FutureOrg, uh, futurelearn.org. Um, there are, um, I believe it's um, Udemy and lots of other online course providers that you can go to to upskill. And here at the Google Digital Garage, as I mentioned, if you're interested in marketing and digital marketing is a very big requirement to the working world today and a really in demand area, then you'll be able to sit the course, which is our Fundamentals of Digital Marketing course. And that is accredited by Google and the Institute of Advertising. And I believe the Open University as well, completely free to do all online and will bring you into the modern age and where we are with the fundamentals of digital marketing. So do you have a look at courses like that if you want to upskill and if that's the area you want to work in? Also include any key projects or research that you've done throughout your studies and uh, education, as mentioned with the dissertation or anything else that you've done in terms of a project and research that can show in practice the kind of things, uh, the kind of interests you have and the kind of um, knowledge you've gathered in that process. But only in all these cases highlight what is relevant to the job that you are applying for. So if you are, for example, going for a job in administration and you're wanting to move out of catering, you might not want to put in that you've got um, a health and safety at work for cooking for example. So do think carefully about the qualifications that you do include. Remember, we've got, it's really important, each line on our uh, CV because we don't have a lot of space and it all has to be really specifically related to that job of application. So we also need to consider our skills and strengths. So it's really useful to think about this as a wider topic in general and consider what your skills and strengths are that you bring to the table. What qualities do people describe you as having? Um, it's There's lots and lots of tests out there. There's careers tests, there's personality tests like Myers-Briggs um, that you might want to try. There's high five tests, I believe it's called, which is a free test online. Have a look at these free career tests and free personality tests to give you an idea about what you can bring to the table. There's also something called Strengths Finder. Um, I believe that may be a paid version, but there may be free options around something similar to that. But all of these will help you to harness and tighten those skills and to get clearer and clarity on the kind of skills that you personally have to offer to the working world. Remember, you will have many skills to offer, but do focus on the ones, as I say, that the job description is bringing up for the job you're applying for. So before you even think about creating a CV, do go and actually look for the job titles and the job roles that you're wanting to apply for so that you can break down the skills that they're seeking before considering what skills you might have to match them. 
Think also about how these particular skills and strengths that you have relate back to the job of choice and the job description. So cross-reference, highlight the kind of skills they're looking for and see which ones you're bringing into the equation. And bringing that together is taking the hard work out of it for the hiring manager. And it means that they're able to crystallize who to select much more quickly. The next thing to consider is the kind of skills that you're bringing forward. So skills are basically what we have um, shown to be an expert in or to be experienced in. But there are different kinds of skills. So soft skills, hard skills and digital skills. Now, soft skills are more of the things that we might think we're born with, and they're more of the things that we want to imply rather than state in our CV. So soft skills might be to do with, for example, empathy, communication. Um, whereas if we can show that in our CV, as in we led a team of people to great results um, and quantify those results as a, a team coming together, it shows that we do have the skills to work together as a team, to have good leadership, etc. So the soft, soft skills are more of those that are naturally born within us. We can develop them, but they are already there and we might not need to necessarily study for them, for example. Now, the hard skills, this is what employers also look for. And the hard skills are the ones, as well as the digital skills, that we want to get at the top part of our CV. Now, the hard skills include many different areas, um, including administration, project management, marketing, finance, um, for example, IT, tech, and sales. Now, all of those may sound like very separate categories and of course they can have their own separate jobs but many of the skills overlap and relate to many different roles so do think about breaking that down and seeing which of those skills relate to you the digital skills are obviously where the world is now we're all very digital so it's looking really at why um what kind of digital skills we might have that can help support us in the digital age so soft skills, um, their leadership, teamwork, communication. And so when we're using those soft skills, as I mentioned, we want to show how, they, how they've been used rather than state we're a good leader. We want to say that we've led a project of X amount of people in X amount uh, of dates, for example, to this result. So we want to give sort of a quantifying around the leadership or just talking about the project that we've done and the amount of people, for example, involved in the project and, and how it worked. Teamwork, we want to give examples of teamwork rather than saying we're good team players because team players is a very easy thing for any of us to write. Um, but if we can show an example of team playing in just a couple of words or just a statement, that will prove that we're good team players rather than just saying we are. And communication, again, if we can give an example of communication, because the co communication comes in many different ways. It can be presenting, it can be written, it can be um, verbal, many different ways that we can communicate. So how have we shown our communication skills in practice will be useful to share. So the hard skills, these are um, the things that we could talk about in terms of qualifications. For example, we might be able to speak another language, we might have accounting, um, but other hard skills include things like um, in marketing, market research, content creation, email marketing. Um, if we're looking at project management, it's more about, for example, risk management, stakeholder management, and it does include leadership as well. IT tech, it might be troubleshooting, it might be testing, it might be software knowledge. Admin, it could be data entry, could be typing. Um, and finance, it could be budgeting, reporting, cost saving, etc. So hard skills can be broken down into categories and we can see how they are applied and how we can add those to our CV as well. And finally, digital skills. So this is um, where we can talk about social media, for example, video editing or coding and how we're using those in the digital age. These are very in-demand skills. So it's worth talking about any um, digital skills we've done in terms of study or in terms of practically applied skills as well. 
So some of the examples here to include are the softer skills, as we might call them, uh, which are presented in grey, and the more technical skills um, that are presented there in blue, so coding, video editing, for example. So have a think about the skills that best match you and your background, but also your aspirations and the job that you're applying for. So project management is essentially seeing a project from the beginning to end, and you might have used a tool to do that. So share that experience and knowledge when you do so. Now, we also need to define our strengths. This is where we really break it down and carefully consider what we're actually good at. So our strengths are the things that people might have mentioned we're good at, we might have had feedback from. It's worth asking five people that we know about what we're good at and what they think of us. That might be colleagues, it might be managers present or past, it might be friends and family. But asking what we're good at is a really good way to start. And also thinking about what we like doing. What are the things that we really enjoy that will make us um, stand out from a crowd because we're so passionate about that because it's something that we've had a vested interest in in ourselves. If you're not yet sure about what it is that you're good at or you're not yet sure, should we say, what it is that you'd like to do in terms of your career goals, we have a session on defining your career goals. So please do sign up for that. I really um, recommend it. Now, there, here are some of the strengths that you might want to include on your CV. For example, you could be driven or enjoy helping people. You're self-motivated. These strengths are useful to include, but again, back them up with a bit of a, a, an experience there. So um, self-motivated through working um, at studying at home during um, the pandemic or self-motivated through working um, on my own in a project or self-motivated from working from home, for example. These are useful things for the employer to understand because they'll be able to know that they're the things that will be um, needed for their job in the future. And therefore, if you're proven in that area, it's all about whether you can demonstrate that experience. They're going to feel more confident about giving you the opportunity. Other words that you might want to include for strengths are passionate, hardworking and caring. So depending on the role that you're applying for, these words are going to be more relevant than others. And um, so if you are going into the caring profession, the softer skills will be more relevant there and the, and the strengths around them. But do qualify that with um, the experience or, or the, um, the way you've used those skills in action, even if it's just um, in your course of study, education or voluntary work. The next thing is to think about how to showcase your experience and the students I work with. So I actually help um, develop people's careers at a number of universities um, as part of my passion. Um, and what we work on is looking at how to showcase your experience. And I invite the students to do a showcase me, which is basically a couple of minutes real about them, maybe a self shot video talking about the word that, that encapsulates their character, what their goals and aspirations are, what they've achieved in some qualified results, and then why then the USP at the end. Some industries, this is more relevant for than others. The creative industries, for example, would like that approach, but you do what's right for your industry and what's right for you. But showcasing yourself in a way that makes you stand out from the crowd and become your own personal brand is a great thing to do. You can also showcase your experience by writing on blogs, um, putting content out there about your knowledge, your experience, and sharing that on places like LinkedIn. Many people have done podcasts, uh, blogs and spoken in groups on LinkedIn that have led to opportunities either with self-employment, uh, their own business or indeed working for a company. So it's never too early to start or too late to begin showcasing who you are and what you want to, to give to the world and what you bring to the world. Because we are all very unique and we all do have something special to bring to the table. And once we know what that is, we will stand out above anyone else because we will not be keeping competing with anyone because we'll be so clear on what it is of value we have to offer. So what constitutes your experience? So this is important. Um, we've talked about showcasing your character, your passion, but how can you do that through the experience you've 
you've actually had. So there's a number of ways that you can gain that experience, whether it be an internship where you're taking part in the role, apprenticeships as well are becoming more and more in, of interest in today's world. Um, and you can start those often from home as well. Work experience itself is obviously a value, part-time jobs, volunteering, and again, back to those certificates that we've talked about in terms of Udemy, Future Org, and, and other ways. And where relevant include hobbies, only if it directly relates to the job of application, otherwise it could take up that very valuable space there again on your CV. So let's reflect now, what is your experience today? First of all, what have you done? Write a list and put next to it your achievements. So put a list of what you have done, each point next to it, an achievement. And then at the end, try and put what that relates to as a role. If you have that as a working document, it makes it nice and easy for you to then create your CV later on and to know where to place your emphasis. And what you want to do is consider the impact that you made from that role and what it had on the business and how it relates now to the role that you're applying for. So as I mentioned, there's no one size fits all. And when we're formatting our CV, we can be very flexible. So what is really useful to do is to visualize that layout and to promote the content that you want to draw attention to. So for example, if you are a new um, leaver from university, you're going to want to probably put your study and education right near the top, as well as your skills. Whereas if you're long into the work experience and, and the job that you're looking to do requires, um, uh, you know, a senior role, for example, you're going to want to showcase more in terms of your work experience. And that would be the one on the right of the screen. So have a think about which is most relevant to the sector, the role of application and also your background fitting to it. Now, here are a couple of CVs as examples. Now, I'm um, wondering which ones you think are good examples. So really the best way to create a CV is to have a clean and easy to read format. So that's black on white, not trying to complicating it with too many colors because that can just distract people. You want to use a nice clear font. Arial is a good one. Um, normally 12 to 14 points because that would be easier to read. And you can see that when we increase the level of our font size, that means we've got to be easier even more crystallized on our CV. What we do want to do is to really take that real estate of the CV, that space on the CV and make it work. Now, which one do you think would be more, most valuable? We recommend that unless you're going for acting or modeling jobs, that number two wouldn't be really relevant. You don't need to put a photograph on there um, as standard. You wouldn't really need to put your marital status. That's not relevant to the job of application. And um, you also want to really reduce the amount of space that's taking up at the top of the page. The left is a better version, there's a nice crisp profile and the contacts are easy to see, but I'd still be more interested in trying bringing that all up above the top line under the name Fatima Allen, um, maybe alongside that she could put her role of marketing assistant because that's nice and clear, and then underneath her a few contact details in a line. Um, she can use the favicons the, of LinkedIn, example, um, uh, email, etc. but try to not put uh, too much information um, in there as well, because um, it only what's relevant to the basic information, as I said, because it's starting to take a lot of the page away in the uh, number one example. Skills, I quite like looking at the metric of skills five out of five with marketing strategy budget, it's quick reference, but there's other ways you can do that without taking over the whole of the page and you can put bullets. The important thing is you want to have sections, you want to make it clear and easy to read and you want it to be skim read. Um, so if you think of headlines, subheadings and in bolded um, and making it very quick to the point of showing the skills and also the impact, they're the things that you need to focus your attention on. Whereas these two are distracting and I wouldn't use any border um, because that is also not necessarily clean. So black on white, nice and simple and to the point. Now, where we can absolutely maximize our impact is being clear and concise, as we've been saying throughout. So summarizing complete sentences and bullet points, trying to use simple language, no jargon, because people cannot really relate to that. So for example, I'm saying I'm a strategic manager with um, 
such and such a leadership program and you're a graduate it's better to say i have shown um i, I have leadership skills shown through um my group work at university rather than um going to um being honest but also not going too flavorsome with saying strategic etc cetera, etc cetera, at that early stage so be clear, avoid jargon, keep it concise and make sure everyone can understand. So don't put something like I was curating a strategy for the 2020 vision. Um, instead, say I plan to increase. I, I created a, a plan to increase sales by 20 percent, um, which it achieved, for example. Be transparent about any gaps in your CV. If you've traveled, say what that has meant, where you've been, what, what it did for you. If you were caring for someone, um, think about how that has, you know, really um, created you as an individual and the skills that that's brought with it. And also get a third opinion or a second or third opinion. Get other people to see your CV. Ask um, old managers, new people um, and anybody you know that can support you. So just a quick break for questions um, in here. Oh, Mario says we had an exercise of ele elevator picture in e at uni and it was fun. Oh, they are fun, Mario. I love elevator pictures. They're brilliant. Um, then we've got what is the difference between a CV and a resume? So a resume is actually um, the French word for CV in a sense. So it's it's meant to be short and more to the point and more crystallized um, in terms of a resume. But actually, there's not too much of a difference between the two. Um, but yes, thank you for that question. How to write the career shift section. So if you are changing careers, thank you for this, Angie. It's a really good point. When you're changing careers, that piece of paper I talked about where you're looking at the skills you've got and how they've been proven and how it relates to the job is a really useful working document. You want to bring that to life in highlighting only those crossover um, skills and showing in your profile at the introduction what you've done and where you're going with that in terms of transferable skills um, for your next role. I hope that helps. And NG again, what is a suitable number of courses we mentioned in the CV? There isn't a suitable amount. It's just the relevance that is important. So pick out the key courses that are really specific to what you're applying for. For example, if you're wanting to be a copywriter, you might want to show a creative or a copywriting course. Um, that would be really valuable. Or you may want to show, if you haven't got that, a more broadly marketing course um, or an English um, degree, because that's also showing writing capabilities. So think about the, the courses only relevant to the job of application. Whereas if you're applying for, say, a um, administrative role that doesn't involve any marketing, you might not need to include all of that. And you just want to focus instead on your English degree to show your level of language, for example. Are there a difference between training courses and certifications? Um, well, a training course is a course that is delivered by a trainer and normally takes over a number of, of stages and steps. Um, interesting question. I've not been asked that one before, but a training course, as long as you get a certificate at the end, um, I suppose that's the question you're asking. So when you're having a training course and you haven't got a certificate, you might still be awarded what we call continual personal development hours. That's something to include. But if you've just done a training course, you can include it. Um, but it's more qualified with a certification because it proves your skill in that area rather than just your continued personal development, the CPD um, that you might have got on a training course. Both are valuable, but they will come with different um, different value depending on um, what you're applying for. OK, I hope that helps answer your questions. Do keep them coming. And thank you to Samantha. I'm sure she's answering lots for you in the chat as well. So in terms of writing a cover letter, it is a really good template that we're putting together here. Um, we've put together just something simple for you to work on and to start with to give you a beginning point. So make sure you do read your job descriptions to make this valuable for you. It's really key now to have a cover letter and it's a huge part, nearly half. So 40 percent of recruiters will look for that. Um, 
in in an application that's because ultimately it showcases your personality it get it's an opportunity to say more about you and why you're going for this role i know as a hiring manager as an employer i was always interested in knowing why someone wanted to do something and who they are because therefore i know that they are coming to me for the right decisions they are committed to the role for the right reasons and they care about what i'm doing and why i'm doing it so do research the company and find out about the company before you do your cover letter because that will show a real passion for what you're applying for you do want to try and make it customized to each role but we'll talk about that as well a lot of recruiters will reject cvs without cover letters so do get take the opportunity to write one and you can email it and attach it and you can put it in the body of the email and attachment as well it's up to you but i would recommend doing both where you can here are the building blocks that the Google team have come up with for you to put together your CV. And if you're getting blank page syndrome, writer's block, hopefully this will take you through those steps and, um, and help you with it. So these are the five main points that we're looking at today. To begin with, you want to think about how you're going to initially approach the organization. So show what you're interested in, what you're applying for and how you heard about it. So if you want to be informal, that's OK, but really gauge what the organization is like. Um, is it informal or, you know, is it friendly? You know, because hello is friendly, but old fashioned. Or are you going to be classic with the hello? Um, think about who you are addressing it to and the kind of culture it is. And if you don't have a name, you could always put to the for the attention of the hiring manager, for example. But it's important to, first of all, think um, about the person that you are addressing. Also, if you have heard about this role through your network, as many people will through referrals, and I really recommend networking on and offline to meet employers and potential employers, do talk about that again in your cover letter because your association is going to support you in that application as well. And do talk about how you heard about it otherwise, because if you did go on the job website on the company website rather than just on the search engine, it will show even more dedication to that company and it will make them feel um, that you value them. So that will stand out in your favor. Also, make sure you summarize yourself. So you want to write a power paragraph here. This is where you get to sell yourself and talk about you, your strengths, what you're bringing to the table and why you. Take your time, again, to list those strong points on a piece of paper, your achievements. Remember that working document that I mentioned, which is your skills and what backs it up. And think about what you enjoy, what, what you can bring to the table there. And when you bring that all together, you can start to put a few lines into a, a short uh, few sentences about what you are bringing, including your hard skills to the table. So, have a look at that and we're going to look a bit later on at strengths in a bit more detail. The next most critical thing that is often missed when we look at applying for jobs is what a CV is set out to do and what an employer wants to achieve. Now, an employer has a problem and they want you to be the solution, but they want it to be made clear straight away. So what you want to do is pick out those keywords and the language used in the job description and cross reference all the way through what skills they're looking for and how you have a background or work experience or study in that area. Also, keep up to date on your industry, what's happening in the area and show your research around the company and also your personal and work skills for the job. How do you match and align? Try and bring that into your problem versus solution too. Again, only relevant achievements here. Bring in those certificates where they do matter. Also, that digital um, garage certificate, if you want to sit it and it's relevant to what your uh, career goals are, have a go with that today. Um, achievements, put those in as well um, where relevant. So you might have got awards for something. You may have um, achieved something in particular for the organization. I recommend for each role where possible to show an achievement. Talk about your languages, your level, basic, intermediary, advanced, and only hobbies if relevant. You sign off. You always want to say how honoured you were or grateful you were to be considered for this position. It shows humility. You also want to show your passion of let, being wanting them to hear from you um, or to hear from them and let them know, you know, please do contact me if you have any further information. 
So you need to tailor your application to the role. If relevant, create a portfolio. So in the creative industry or other industries, there could be an opportunity for you to showcase yourself. Some people in marketing, for example, have created um, websites of themselves and marketed themselves because ultimately if they can market themselves, they can market others So and, and they can market products and services. So begin with you and showcase your portfolio. Show some examples in there of your work, videos perhaps, or um, projects that you've achieved. And also um, maybe testimonials for the outcome of those projects. Showcase your skills. Um, what kind of things have you done um, that are relevant again to the role? We've talked about these earlier today, but you can talk about soft skills, hard skills, and digital skills. And qualifications, again, make sure that they are tailored to the role. Start strong. So here's an example. Dear Mrs. Webb, I'm a customer service assistant. So we know already that they're in that role. Currently employed by Smarks. I'd like to apply for the sales assistant role at a particular company. I heard about this through the job site. So we're already seeing that it's clear about what you do now, what your intentions are and where you found us. Next is summarizing yourself. So I describe myself as friendly, helpful, a patient team member and pride in offering great level of customer service. I've been praised for the warm manner in which I deal with my customers. So if you can quantify that even further or show that praise, that's brilliant. But um, just being able to state it in that way as an objective result rather than your opinion adds value because it shows you've done it on the job. Problem versus solution. So this is where you want to look at, say, three things that make you special for the role and just highlight those throughout. So I'd be a great fit because I cope well under pressure. I deal with a range of customers on a daily basis. So if somebody is wanting to recruit someone in the customer service space, they're going to need those skills. So think about your abilities to your role in particular. Then the next bit is the relevant achievements. If we have them, talk about that you enjoy volunteering, that you take short courses and highlight those important skills that you've had um, for the role that you might be applying for, which in the case of customer service are useful. And again, that honourable sign off at the end. So no questions at the moment. So hopefully I'm sure that's because Samantha's doing a brilliant job in the chat and down to time, we're going to move on. So now we're going to get ready for that job search. What do we need to do? So what content should we share? We can share photos, videos, posts, pages about the businesses or sites that you engage in and the posts, for example, that you are tagged in by others. So this is where we're looking at our digital footprint. Um, we want to share obviously things about ourselves that are relevant to our portfolio, but there might be times that we're tagged in things that we don't want to be tagged in. So do spend time looking at your digital footprint, Google yourself, find out what it is saying about you and take down what you're not comfortable with it showing. You know, there are sites like about.me that you might have put yourself on once upon a time and want to update or remove. Have a look quickly at that digital footprint. Also look at the pages you follow. Do they represent the jobs you're looking for and spend time working towards that? And the digital footprint is so important when applying for jobs because so many recruiters will have a look at your profile. So for example, 90% will look at social media to check you out. And actually a lot of people use now um, in social media as a very important recruiting troll, uh, tool. And they also use social media to find you. So 90% looking at your social media means that we need to really get that up to scratch and make it reflect who we are and what we want to achieve. And don't rule out Facebook because 75% of recruiters do use um, Facebook to recruit, followed by 50%, 57% on Twitter and 38% on LinkedIn. So you can see that all those channels are of value. The next is about creating that personal brand online. Do sit that session I talked about. But what you want to think about is how to reevaluate your social media in line with your objectives, your clear goals. You can create a LinkedIn profile, make sure that that elevator pitch is on there and join in discussions and network because often jobs can come through that experience and make sure that you yourself are sharing engaging content that people will value. 
Now, the world of work is changing. We're moving into the fourth industrial revolution. That's 3D, artificial intelligence, etc. So digital skills are becoming really important. And whilst it might seem like a challenging time, it's an exciting time to really see what's happening in the world. If you can identify those trends and see how it fits to your role and requirements and what you can do for an organization, it will really stand you in good stead. So what tools can you look for um, when you're applying for jobs? Let's have a think. First of all, there's the search engines, Google itself. When you go on there and you put in jobs near me, it will give you a whole host of jobs, part time, full time, work from home, and you'll be able to select by industry and job title. These tools are really useful in giving you quick reference and enabling you to narrow in on your job search. Job boards like Indeed, Read, Total Jobs and more are a great way to facilitate your CV getting out to a, a big group of recruiters once you know the job you want in question. And again, don't forget those professional networks. Get out there, get on LinkedIn, um, network on there, talk to people in the groups that you're interested in joining and in person now that we're back to a bit more of in-person contact. So this is an example of the Google job boards. As I mentioned, you can look by employer, you can look by industry, title, sector um, and location. So do take a look. The key things that you need to look out are what are the tasks and responsibilities of these roles and think about your value there and line it up again on that working document. The specific skills, even more so, what skills are you bringing for that role? Commit yourself to personal development. What gaps do you have and what can you focus on? What free courses can you apply for today? And also think about the salary and location that you might be looking towards and um, where you need to put yourself. Glass Doors, I believe, is a, another recruitment site where you can find out your salary expectations for your industry. It's important and it's one thing that we forget to pick a job that matches our values. Remember, we're spending a huge amount of time at work. So have a think about the values you have as an individual. Um, again, I point you to the direction of the career goals um, session because that will talk you through that in more detail. But it's about values are distinct from goals. Values are why you care about what you care about and why it matters to you and what, what it means to you. Whereas goals are more kind of a, an end result that you have in mind, something you're aiming for. So a goal can be often written in a form of a SMART goal, which we will go over next. But getting clear on how you'll feel fulfilled and valuable to the organisation will not only help your self-confidence, but it will help your opportunity in the marketplace. So be clear on your values and your goals. The next thing is to look at that plan for success. So plan ahead. A SMART goal is specific, measurable, uh, achievable, realistic and time bound. So being specific, what do you actually want to achieve? What resources are required for you to get to that? Who will be involved and what does it look like? So, you know, for example, I want to work as a finance manager at a startup. Having clear goals is a really specific goal that makes it easier for you to know where to take your, um, your steps next and where to apply next. M is measurable. So what metrics um, do you need for your progression? So how will you know you've achieved your goal? Maybe you'll get an interview. Um, maybe you'll have a job offer. Achievable. So looking at what achievable is, is do you have the resources currently to achieve that goal? So it's got to be um, the resources that you are on hand to you. And is it realistic? Do you also have those knowledge and skills to back up what you're going for? And time bound. What is the deadline for this? Um, is it going to be a month, a year, two years? What is realistic and when are you going to achieve it by? So what are your career goals? Please share those in the chat with us now and let me know. Um, we've got a few minutes left now and I just would love to share any ideas with you. But I hope from today's session, you've learned one thing that you're going to take away with you. You're taking one thing and you're making action on one thing today. If you make that small action, each tiny turn to the dial can make huge progression into your future. And if you do one tiny thing every day, in a year, you'll have 365 small steps towards your dream job or career or business. So please do share in the chat now what you've taken from today, what one thing you've learned or what one goal you're going to make. 
it has been an absolute joy to talk to you today. Don't forget those sessions that I mentioned before. So there were find your career goals, build your personal brand online. And also this one that you've had today are all relevant to what you're trying to achieve. We've also got building presentation skills, effective presentation skills that will be so useful if you're having to go to an interview, for example, with a presentation included. So have a look at those courses um, and also sign up for the fundamentals course if you're interested and other courses like Future Learn that are out there. I can't see any final questions. And I think that's because Samantha is doing an absolutely awesome job there in the chat. But please do um, share with us any queries or questions you might have in the final minutes. So what are your next steps? So the first thing I would do is to write that working document about your skills, what it is the experience that backs up those skills and um, how it applies to the job of application. But actually, even before you do that, maybe look at the jobs that are available to you out there in the working world, on the search engines, on the job boards, and work backwards from there. What do you need to do to get to that point and break down those skills? After having that working document, then you can go into um, creating your CV. Also, do do those certifications, those free courses. It's going to add so much to your profile if it's relevant to the job you are going for. Don't forget as well that free Google certification that you can apply for. So this is the free flexible online training courses in really valuable subjects from today's world. And that's at goo.gov slash career cert forward slash UK. I can see that um, Sam Saminu has got some goal setting steps. Brilliant. Akash, want to complete my chartered accountancy and exams in India. Fantastic. Pascal, taking daily steps. And Mario, add up the story about small steps and a book called Atomic Habits. I love that book. Brilliant book. Thank you. Please do share how this session has helped you today. Say how this session has made you feel. And do tweet us out at Digital Garage today. I've been Annie, your trainer today. Samantha, thank you for your help in the chat. And I look forward forward very much to seeing you in a future session. And for now, thank you and all the best. Let me know how this has been for you and good luck with everything you do. Thank you.